it guys it's blackwing 2040 and guys we have made it we made it to the end to our journey to the blackest night guys <sighs> i don't know how but we actually did it and today we are covering the last book before the blackest night and that book is green lantern core emerald eclipse i know the cover is so bright it is really just like so bright but we made it guys we re actually made it so as you know i say the oath and let's begin shall we <clears throat> in brightest day in blackest night no evil shall escape my sight let those who worship evil's might beware my power green lantern's light we're all charged up for our final final story let's begin now in this story a lot happens in the story by the way and pretty much there are three instances that are going on in the story so i'm gonna cover up everything that leads up to those in instances and i'm gonna cover the shortest one first that way i could get those things out of the way because i don't want to be dragging on going from plot point then switching and switching and switching i'm gonna stick with one part tell you about it and then move on to the next one so i feel like that would be a lot more quicker and more understandable for you guys so with that being said let's begin we open up um in our story where mongol was still traveling th through space and he lands on the planet daxum now for those who don't know daxum is the sister planet of krypton and for those who are watching Supergirl, we already have a Daxamite on the TV show named Mon-El. And, of course, you got, if you have remembered my Sinestro Corps, Sinestro Corps War review, one of the members of the Green Lantern Corps, Sodom Yat, who is now Ion, he is a Daxamite. He's from the planet Daxum. So now Mongo shows up to Daxum, claiming it to be his, um, his new holding ground or base of operations for the Sinestro Corps, so he puts out a big signal in the sky, um, asking, well, not asking, telling all Sinestro Corps members, come to the planet Daxum, because that will be their, you know, base of operations from now on, because Sinestro is somewhere out there doing who knows what. Back on Oa, ha um, Hal, Guy are still retributing with themselves, and trying to get themselves accustomed with their lives on Oa. And then Sora Nick Natu comes to, um, who wants to speak to Kyle. She wants to speak to Kyle about, because they have a little, you know, feelings for each other, if I may say. Um, Sora Nick asks, um, Kyle when the Star Sapphire Miri asks them to look into her diamond to see who do, do they truly love. And when they looked in, they said they saw themselves together with each other. And with that happening, they, f they feel like real emotional for each other, that they really start to really love each other. And this happened. They actually lip locked. And Sora Nick was like, that felt great <laughs> i hate it when i read comics and the character just automatically just say how that kiss felt and all that but anyway sora nick decides to well not decide she goes back to her home world of korrigar with her partner ayalande who has to deal with democratic or um political situations then <clears throat> A crash ship shows up on Oa, and turns out in that crash ship, the passenger was Sodom Yat's mother, and his mother was begging him and pleading him to return to Daxum so they could so he can help them fight against Mongol, but he doesn't want to. You want to know why? Because when he was a kid, Daxum or Daxamites really had a fear of extraterrestrials on their planet. And when Sodom was young, he was friends with an, um, with an alien. But his parents brainwashed him and pretended he was never friends with him. And they treated him, um, they treated the alien as a monster. And they, they killed him and then they stuffed his remains in a museum to make him look like a statue. How savage is that? Can you believe that? Just the savagery. Gosh. And so, so... So, um, Sodom's mother is pleading and pleading and begging him to go. Even Aresia is telling him to go. But Sodom decides to, you know, go with it. Him and Aresia go to, um, Daxum while his mother stays on Oa. And then we move on to the Owen Cyan cells. <clears throat> where Sinestro Corps members are still trapped in their prisons. And Guy Gardner and Kilowog bring in a new prisoner 
it's the Red Lantern, um, Va no, Vice, his name is Vice, the Red Lantern, the Red Lantern, Vice, his head looks like the shape of a crescent, let me show you, let me show you guys what he looks like, I'm sorry, I feel like I should have this page bookmark, what is wrong with me, <clears throat> and here we, wait, wait, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry guys, Here we are. <clears throat> Here we are. This is Vice. He and put you know how the Red Lanterns the Red Lanterns are very savage killers. Their plasma can burn through anything. It is just they are savage killers. And now we move on to <clears throat> to back to um Sorenik Sorenik and Iolande while they're handling political missions on Korrigar. And while they're just doing their job, they head inside a facility just to coordinate with each other for another, you know, strategy. And then who decides to show up? Sinestro! And you are not going to believe what he has to say. And this is where secrets are officially revealed, guys. Turns out, Sinestro is Sornik Natu's father! Star Wars reference? Anyone? <laughs> so anyway, this is... And this is where we move on to the transition. So, this is how it, this is how it actually happened. Sora Nick was well, she is um, Sinestro's daughter. So Sinestro explains the whole story on why he hasn't been there for her, and and why he's you know he's a criminal and everything. So he was Sinestro was married to Abin Sor's sister Aaron Sir. And they had a child together, and their child was Sornik, not not two. But of course, you know, during Sinestro's Green Lantern days, he was being very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very dict. He was kind of pretty much being like a dictator on his planet Korrigar, and that led so many complaints to his family that Sinestro. That's when Sinestro was banned, or not banned. Well, yes, he was banished from the Green Lanterns. He was, you know, relieved of relieved of his Green Lantern duties. And so, um, Sinestro put, um, his daughter, Sornik, in hands of the doctor who, the doctors who gave, I wouldn't say gave birth to her, but helped, um, ugh, what's the word, I'm, I really don't know what the word is, but helped, but helped, um, give, you know, they were the surrogates, the doctors, um, decided to be the surrogates for Sornik, and Sornik thought they were her parents, and they've been, he, she's been with them her entire life, so Sinestro came to her one time, and I would say he branded on her, he, but he made a little mark on her face to, you know, to make it as, like, a signal so he can keep track of where she is, creepy, right, so Sinestro reveals the whole truth that she is his daughter, and he, I know she doesn't like, she really doesn't like this idea, like, she's ready to, like, beat Sinestro to a pulp, but she can't, and soon enough, she decides to accept it, but she doesn't want to, but she'll use the scar as a reminder of how much, e how evil Sinestro is, and how much she hates him, and after that, Sinestro flies away, and now we move on to Daxum, where there's being a dispute between Mongol and Arkilo. Arkilo is the sergeant, the drill sergeant for the Sinestro Corps, and they decide to have a battle over leadership of the Sinestro Corps. So Mongol and um Arkilo are duking it out with each other, and just when Arkilo thinks he's won the battle, Mongol gets up, strangles him, and rips his tongue out of his mouth. I'm I kid you not. I don't want to show it to you guys because it looks so so graphic. But he rips his tongue out and Arkilo wraps his tongue around his um Arkilo wraps his tongue around his own neck as a just as a reminder but he doesn't care he can't really speak so that's the problem so Sodom yet arrives um on his home planet of Daxum and Daxum has a red sun so outside of Daxum's atmosphere Sodom has Kryptonian powers but as soon as he enters Daxum's atmosphere, his Kryptonian powers are gone. But he still has his Green Lantern powers, though, and his Ion powers. So he reunites with his father, who's the one who sent his mother. But Sodom is so pissed at his father because he still, he really hasn't forgiven his parents at all for what they did to him. So he decides, you know, to help his, 
um, his home planet anyhow, and he wants to use the full power of Ion, but he can't use it because the, um, the Green Lantern Ring is his only power source. So he takes off the ring while he's fighting Mongol. He flies up all the way to the Daxum Red Sun into into the sun, and he acts of, activates um the Ion power. And what he does, it's beyond incredible. He turns the Red Sun into a yellow sun. So that means anyone under a yellow sun who's Kryptonian or Daxum or a Daxamite has superpowers. So now all the Daxamites have heat vision and they were able to defend themselves against Mongol and his rule. So Mongol and the other Sinestro Corps decide to leave the planet and Sodom pretty much he sacrificed just to save his home planet. He didn't want to, but he had to because as a Green Lantern, they don't leave people behind. They don't let people perish. So as his last act of a Green Lantern, he paid the ultimate price. Wow. Just wow. So Aresia decides to help out with the Daxamites with their cleanup. And they're sacrificing, um, I mean not sacrifice. they're killing other Sinestro Corps members instead of having them face justice. And Sodom's father told Aresia to leave this planet. We don't want your kind here anymore. I'm like, wow, so just because you guys have powers... That makes you got that makes you think you could just do whatever you want. So apparently, Aresia leaves and she feels sorry for Sodom for making the ultimate sacrifice, and she flies back to Oa. And now we go on to the final instance. Back on Oa, the Red Lantern Vice starts a prison break, and all the prisoners in the um science cells are starting to break out. Yellow Lan um, Sinestro Corps members are breaking out, other prisoners are breaking out. It's an all-out massacre, and the yellow rings that they have contained in the facility are now traveling back to its original bearers. So Guy, Kyle, Kilowog, Salak, they're all trying to keep the prison under control, and it ain't helping. Until suddenly, the Alpha Lanterns show up, and they decide, they just start taking names, killing people left and right. And after this whole massacre is done, they line up every single prisoner um, in a line, and they just start executing them. And apparently, they were able to um, subdue, subdue Vice. They were able to put him in a cage where he can't, you know, break out and do anything, So, which is good. So, But in the process, the Guardian Scar is deep in the deepest, darkest parts of Oa and decides to rip open Oa's app. Oa's atmosphere. So now Oa has no protection. They don't have no defense systems up. Now the Green Lantern Corps has to keep has to fix Oa before any attack comes. And Kyle and Guy are well, they are I would say they're on you could say they're on probation, if it would say. They're the Guardians sent them off from Oa and they let the Alpha Lanterns continue executing prisoners. Except for the two prisoners that they decide to let live. So, at least they're doing that. But the Alpha Lanterns are doing this in order of the Guardians. These guys are so heartless. I don't know what's wrong with these Guardians. They are so heartless. Man, I don't understand these guys. But at the end of that, Scar finally says, It is time for the Blackest Night to begin. And deep in space, you can see something. As an asteroid is about to crack... Something happens, and what breaks through this asteroid, you may ask? Well, I'll show you what it is. Turns out that thing that breaks through an, the asteroid is none other than a black lant a black ring. I said black lantern. It turns out it's a black ring that breaks through that breaks through that asteroid. Meaning the blackest night is about to begin. And that's where we end, guys, because whoo, that was just amazing. Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching this review, and if you guys want to know how I'm going to do this Blackest Night review, well, or better yet, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I will be live reading the book for you guys next week, because I don't want to, I don't want to do it tomorrow, I still have plans other days, so I will do it next week, either Monday or Tuesday for you guys, so... I'm not sure what time of day and I'm planning it, but if you guys want me, 
if you guys are interested in um watching me read live um read Blackest Night to you guys live, that would be awesome because I feel like it seems better for me to read the events and Blackest Night is a huge huge book. So many things happen to it. I feel like I need to read um the DC events live because there's so much stuff to explain. So I'm gonna read the book live to you guys next week. And I hope you guys are very, very excited for that. I'm excited to read that to you guys as well. Because that's like my number one favorite DC crossover event. So, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for that live reading of Blackest Night. It's going to be so awesome. But, you know, as always, I am Vengeance. I am Darkness. I am Blackwing. Stay golden.